Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to continue the first video using regression model. We have the Netflix revenue and Netflix revenue starts from 2014 quarter one to 2020 quarter three. And we have out of sample period, which we are going to forecast the sales starting from 2020 quarter four till 2022 quarter three. So in order to decide for the correct model, we need to first visualize the data and I'm going to use insert function in Excel and I will choose a line graph and this will create a placeholder for our graph and here right click. First, I'm going to add the sales data here. This is the Netflix revenue and serious values are starting from 2014 quarter one. And here we are not going to stop selecting data here. We are going to include the period that we don't have sales data to, to be able to compare the sales with the forecast. Okay. And then click okay. And you see that horizontal axis have some numbers, which we need to convert them to dates. And we click on edit here and then choose the dates. Again, we are going to start with 2014 quarter one till 2022 quarter three and click OK. And one more time, OK. Now you can see data here. And now by looking at this data, we see that there is an obvious trend. Netflix revenue increases over time and it's almost exponential. It's not a linear growth. It's a nonlinear growth. And we don't have any seasonal variation in this data. So for that reason, we are going to use a trend forecasting model not multiple regression with dummy variables. Remember multiple regression with dummy variables is for the data that has both trend and seasonal variation. Now we need to choose the trend. So to choose trend, we are going to use a plus sign on this graph. And then here the trend line, if you go here, the arrow, you can be able to see the more options. I'm clicking on more options. Now, when you choose linear trend, it doesn't fit to the data. OK, at some point, linear trend forecasts more than the revenue and at other points, linear trend under forecast the sales data. For that reason, we will choose another trend line option. So it seems like this trend line looks like more polynomial. So I'm choosing polynomial order two. When I choose that, look what happens. The trend line now overlaps with the actual data. So I'm going to use this trend line instead of linear trend line. And now the next question is, if we use a polynomial function, what is the functional form for regression analysis? The easiest way to find out is to click on display equation on chart. When you click on display equation on chart, you'll see that the sales, which is our Y is equal to 6,101 X square and our X variable horizontal X is time. So that means time square plus 30,126 times X, X is our time plus some constant. So given this information, I can show you how our forecasting equation looks like. So there is sales is equal to a sum constant, let's say a that we are going to estimate plus B times time plus C times time square. This is the form. So I need one column of data for time and I need one column for time square. That's the only difference between linear trend forecasting and polynomial trend forecasting. And I hope it's clear why we don't use linear trend because linear trend is not perfectly fitting our sales data, but polynomial trend does. Now, in order to forecast, we need now two more columns here, one for time, which we have it. And now for one for time square. So for time variable, remember we number the periods consecutively. And for time square, you are just going to get the square of time. Select time, shift six and power two. And now we are going to drag down this formula. Okay. So we have all the data that we need to forecast sales using polynomial trend model. Now let's do that. Let's click on data and then data analysis and choose from this window regression and click OK. 
Our input Y range is the sales. I'm going to choose sales with its header. I'm not going to choose anything outside of in sample period. And for input X range, the predictor variables are time and time square. So I'm going to choose time and time square until 2020 quarter three, including 2020 quarter three. Since I choose the data with the labels, I click on labels and I want the results to be on a new worksheet. So I click OK. And now you can see on the screen the results. R square is 0.99, very high. It's almost close to one. And coefficient estimates are here. And the p-values are very small. If you don't like to see number E in your output table, you can just format the cells and then choose number and choose the amount of decimals you want to show on your output table. I prefer to have four decimals and then click OK. Now you can see that p-values are very small. That means all coefficients are significant. Let's copy paste this coefficients because we need them to forecast sales. So let's copy paste them here and let's clean our workspace. So now next step is to forecast. So I need a column here. Let's insert here forecast. And now if you remember from the lecture videos, we need first the intercept because we are writing the same equation, forecasting equation. But remember, we need to fix the coefficients. So I click on F4, fix them, plus this was the intercept. The coefficient of time, fix it, times the time variable, plus the coefficient of time square, we can fix it, times the time square, and then enter. This is the equation we use to forecast sales for the first period. And now you can drag down this formula and you can calculate the forecast for both in sample and out of sample period. Now we want to insert this here. So to do that, you are going to right click and choose select data and add Netflix, let's say forecast, forecasted sales. And now I'm going to choose the sales here and then click OK. And one more time, click OK. Now let's make our graph visually looking better. What we can add here, let me move it here. We can add chart title and we can get rid of grid lines. And now we can add the legend and we can have the legends here. Chart title, we can say Netflix revenue or sales versus forecasted forecasted revenue. Now the next thing is we need to calculate root mean square error in order to choose the best model. Remember we have already calculated root mean square error for the holds method. Now we are going to calculate root mean square error for this regression model. So errors are the difference between the revenue minus the forecast. And we are going to calculate errors, remember, just for in sample period. This is very important. Error square is just the square of an error. And then mean square error is the average of squared errors. And root mean square error, square root of this number is QRT and mean square error. So here, root mean square error is 62,991.0393. And for Holtz method, it's 78,452.9413. So given these two numbers, the best method to forecast is the regression model. But this is not a linear trend. This is a polynomial trend model. So that's the end of the video. I hope this helps for your project.